Well, hello there. My name is Zach Burkhardt, and I'm your host today for Mr. Groovy's Movies. Today we're talking about one of my favorite movies, which is The Princess Bride. And here to discuss it with us is my great friend, Sophie Burkhardt. Alright, so let's begin. Now, I love this movie, and so do you. And I always love to hear your immediate response to a movie. So, what do you think is the theme and, and the redemption of this story? Well, the theme is something that we, when we look at the theme, we want to see it in almost really every scene of the movie. So I really thought about this for a long time, and I think ultimately the theme of The Princess Bride is true love conquers all. We see this time and time again throughout the movie, and I'll go into that more later. And I think the redemption is the redemption of Buttercup, uh, as she's saved by finally being faithful to true love and to a true lover, Wesley. Now, so we can get started. Maybe you can walk us through the act structure of the film, the plot outline, the classical paradigm. That would be fantastic. Well, thanks, Seth, but I like to use a whiteboard to illustrate these points. So if you could please turn your attention to the screens, we'll show a clip of me walking through the steps. All right, so just to briefly walk through some of these extra parts that Giannetti kind of talks about. So the first thing we talk about is act structure. So what he briefly mentions is you have this certain act structure that you find in the movie. The first 25%, or the first act, is basically the setup of the movie. Um, then the second part, the middle part, the 50% of the movie is the confrontation, and that's the main meat of the movie when things start building up against your main character a lot. And then the last 25%, the third act, is the resolution of the movie. That's when everything kind of pans out and gets good again. So if we go into a value princess bride in this form, I would say the setup, we go all the way, we see Buttercup and Wesley fall in love, then we see them separated by Wesley's supposed death, and then this gets us all the way up to right when Buttercup is captured. So in the setup, we learn that she loves Wesley, but she thinks he's dead, and so she's engaged to Humperdinck, and now she's being captured. So that's kind of our setup for the whole movie. Then we go on to the confrontation, and the confrontation covers a vast majority, so it covers from when she's kidnapped, and I would say all the way to uh, when Miracle Max brings Wesley back to life, right before you have the attack on the castle, right before you have the marriage, marriage of Buttercup and Humperdinck. So that's your main confrontation where most of the problems are going to happen, where most of the problems that you face of Buttercup being stopped and uh, getting true love by Humperdinck, uh, and when both she and Wesley are stopped by Humperdinck and Rogan from being together. And I would say about the midpoint of this is when Wesley uh, is taken, well, well, to back up a bit, when they leave the fire swamp and Humperdinck surrounds them and then Wesley's ultimately taken to Rogan, but Buttercup doesn't know that. But I would say that that's the midpoint because you think uh, about this section, you think, oh, Yes, they're going to be together. Wesley's found her. And then it changes all over again when they're confronted and Wesley is taken ultimately and ultimately then killed. So then we'll move on to another thing, the classical paradigm that he kind of talks about. So we start out with the exposition. That's the very beginning. And we kind of, we start out and we see our main character, Buttercup. And then ultimately a little bit, it takes a little bit. We have a little bit of setup before we meet the antagonist, Humperdinck, because we have that first, oh no, Wesley's dead kind of drop feeling before we have Humperdinck actually stopping them uh, from being together. And Humperdinck stopping them kind of also comes in the form of Bazzini uh, because he's being paid by Humperdinck. So then we have these rising action of these various scenes. We have when Wesley rescues her, then the fire swamp, then they're stopped at the fire swamp, and then Buttercup is pleading with uh, Humperdinck to send out something to alert Wesley where she is. Then we have Wesley's ultimate, we have Wesley's death, and then his resurrection from uh, Miracle Max. And then we go on and we have that uh, key plot point when the tension is very high is we have the marriage of Buttercup and Humperdinck, and then the others break into the castle. And so then that kind of leads all the way up into our climax, which is right when Buttercup is about to commit suicide, and then Humperdinck and Wes is kind of ensuing verbal battle. And as soon as that's over, and another climactic point is uh, Rogan and Inigo's battle, but they're both happening at the same time. So as soon as that's over, 
Then we have the resolution, and this goes back down as uh, they all escape and ride away on ponies, and then ultimately the closure as we find the little boy who's kind of on the outskirts of the ultimate story, falling in love with the story. So just some major plot points that we want to keep in mind as we go on through this that really point to the theme of true love and Buttercup's redemption. So the points where Wesley rescues um, Buttercup and uh, he accuses her of not being faithful to true love. And then when we have them getting through the fire swamp and leaving the fire swamp where Buttercup again proves that she is not faithful to true love. Wesley has told her he will always come for her but she doesn't really believe that they can make it out of this situation through true love, so she makes a sacrifice in order to save Wesley's life. Then we have Buttercup's pleading and her obstinance, her assurance that Wesley is going to come, that maybe maybe true love will win because she believes, at least, in Wesley. Then we have Wesley's ba basic death, because he's mostly dead, not 100% dead, and so then we begin to wonder if true love is really going to conquer overall. Well, then we have Aningo and Fesic. They come and they get Wesley, and then Wesley is brought back to life because of Mir Miracle Max and because his wife hears that Wesley is after a search for true love. So Wesley is ultimately brought back to life because of his search and his desire for true love. Well, then we have the marriage of Humperdinck and Buttercup, and we really start freaking out. And Buttercup ultimately comes to the realization that Wesley is not coming and that true love is done for with her. And this leads to her suicide attempt because she's had that realization that she can't go on in life without Wesley, without that true love. She can't keep going with Humperdinck. Then this brings us to your final confrontation between Wesley and Humperdinck and their verbal battle. And ultimately, Wesley's able to stand, even though he's been mostly dead, and he's able to convince Humperdinck that he could fight him. And so once again, true love conquers all. Same goes for Nigo versus Ro Rogan. Um... Rogan deals a punishing stab to Inigo, but Inigo keeps going and is able to eventually kill Rogan because of his true and deep love for his father. So it doesn't always have to be a romantic love. It's just a strong, sacrificial love for another person. And then we have their happily ever after as they ride out on ponies and Wesley and Buttercup share the most wonderful kiss in recorded in all of history. And then we find that the little kid has fallen in love with the story. And so ultimately, when we go through the act structure, the classical paradigm, and some of the major, 10, uh, 10 or 11 of the major plot points of the movie, we're able to get a good glimpse of how true love really fits in and brings this all together in this nice, beautiful, amazing, funny, hilarious story. Wow, thanks, Sophie. Now, I know you've studied Louis Giannotti on film, and specifically story. Are there any quick insights you could give us um, to add into this film from having read the book? Well, there are several different kinds of genres, as you know. Um, I think the Princess Bride kind of fits into the action, adventure, and romantic comedy genre. And there's also seven different ways that you can use this genre in a movie, and I think this movie tries to make a parody as far as romantic comedy, it oversizes the villain, and it makes the, the hero, Buttercup, really overly childish. And as far as the action and adventure, well, we have Indigo Montoya, and if that's not a parody of action and adventure, there's no character that is a parody of action and adventure. Now, another thing that I like to talk about is narrative. There are all different kinds of narratives and stories. And I wouldn't say this one is a formalistic narrative. We have the grandpa who's reading the book to his grandson, and he's kind of guiding the story. Sometimes he will redo a scene or he'll focus on the scene. We have the grandson's commentary on that scene, like when he redid the scene of Buttercup with the eels, or the grandson commentated on Buttercup's dream about marrying Humperdinck, which really gives uh, a much more importance and significance to those scenes than if we didn't have someone guiding it. All right, so now we can begin with examining the evidence even more in depth to see if your claim is really true. Let's walk through it using Brian Goddard's story structure. Okay. All right, so who would you say is the hero of the movie? Can you tell us a little bit about him or her? Well, the hero of the movie is definitely Buttercup. And the most important fact about Buttercup is that she is the most beautiful woman in all the land. And that's really the most redeeming qualities that we have about Buttercup. In many cases, she can act very childish, 
first depending on Humperdinck to rescue her because he's an amazing tracker and the way in which she communicates with the Zini and Bezik and Inigo it just comes across as very childish. Another thing is she is very weak. She always lets Wesley save her. So there aren't really many redeeming qualities to Buttercup except for the fact you know, that she's beautiful. So what would you say would be her, her main flaw? Well, her flaw in this movie is that she isn't faithful to true love. This is what gets her in her whole problems in the first place. In the very beginning, she is in love with Wesley, but then the moment she learns that Wesley dies, she's off getting engaged to help protect. Wesley even accuses her of doing this and abandoning her true love later on. So that when that happens, that causes all her problems of now being engaged to Humperdinck and having to deal with him when Wesley is discovered to still be alive. The second time she is unfaithful to her true love is when she sacrifices that at, um, after they encounter Humperdinck's forces uh, when they get out of the fire swamp. She sacrifices that in order to save Wesley's life, which causes even more troubles and actually costs Wesley his life. So what is her, her goal in this movie? Well, certainly her goal in this movie is to have true love, and the only way that she can have true love is to be united with Wesley. So that overarching goal that she's trying to accomplish is to be united with Wesley. And who is the main adversary of this film? Can you elaborate, can you elaborate a little bit on him? Sorry. <laughs> the main adversary of the film is Prince Humperdinck. And we know that he's an adversary because he's keeping Buttercup and Wesley from being united. He's keeping Buttercup from her true love. Now, the things we know about Humperdinck, one thing that's actually a good quality of his is that he is an excellent tracker. And that is his only good quality. We know that he is evil. He is trying to murder Buttercup in order to start a war. He is obsessed with starting this war. He even tries to kill, uh, and kill, kind of kills Wesley, who he's mostly dead. Um, out of anger and rage, so he's just a very evil man, and he has no love. That's really the most important fact about Humperdinck. He doesn't love. What would you say is Buttercup, our heroes? What is her apparent defeat in this film? Well, her apparent defeat is definitely the marriage. Before that, she had every hope of Wesley coming to save her. She believed that he would come back. She believed Humperdinck that he had sent messages to get Wesley to come back, and that he'd actually saved Wesley's life. But when that priest says that they're man and wife, and she realizes that they're united and she's going to have to spend the rest of her life with Humperdinck and not with her true love, that it looks like her goal has been completely destroyed. So when is, you could almost say the climax, when is the final confrontation in this movie? Now, the final confrontation, I don't really think, is between Buttercup and Humperdinck, but instead between Wesley, Buttercup's goal, and Humperdinck, her adversary. And um, when, uh, when Wesley and Humperdinck confront each other at the very end, and Wesley's able to convince Humperdinck um, that he will win, and he has Buttercup tie Humperdinck up. So I think that's the final confrontation that allows true love to triumph over the lack of love of Humperdinck. What is Buttercup's self-revelation? Now, Buttercup's self-revelation comes slightly before the final confrontation when she holds that dagger to her chest and is ready to kill herself because she's finally realized that she cannot live without Wesley. For all these past years, she's been trying to live without Wesley, trying to move on, getting engaged to Humperdinck, but she finally realizes that she can't keep going on like being unfaithful to her true love. She has to either have true love or end her life now. So that's her self-revelation. She needs to be faithful to true love. And last, but certainly not least, what is the resolution of this film? Well, the resolution of the film is that true love wins. Wesley is able to fool Humperdinck because of true love, and he and Buttercup are able to ride off on ponies into the distance because of true love, and Inigo is able to kill Count Rogan. True love for his father finally conquers. So we see that true love wins as they ride off. And then at the very end, we see that the little grandson, even he's been conquered by true love, and he finds that he absolutely loves this story, even though it's romantic. Alright, so let's move on to Aristotle. He is one of my absolute favorite film critics. Um, Zach, Aristotle died thousands of years ago. Hmm? <laughs> Whatever you say, Sophie. So, um, anyway. What kind of film would you consider this based off of Aristotle's various genres? 
Well, I would say based on because it's supposed to be funny and ridiculous and silly and all that sort of thing, I would say that this film is a comedy. Well, we're still going to use the six parts of tragedy because I, for one, um, I think they can be very helpful in discussing even a comedic film. So, what is the plot of the film? So, we have the basic plot, and the thing to know is that this is a very simple plot. There aren't a whole lot of complex parts. It's simple, the action, one action leads to another action, all in search of uh, Buttercup being united with Wesley. So, we start off, they're in love, and they're separated, they find each other, they're in love again, and then they're separated again, and then at the very end, they're reunited in true love. So, that's based the basic plot. Uh, in the plot, what we have is we have a discovery. Buttercup discovers through the incidents of the film that she must be faithful to true love. So that's the discovery that our protagonist is making. Who are the characters? How do they act? And are they really believable? Well, we've already kind of talked about Buttercup and Humperdinck. So I'll focus on the other characters. Wesley. Wesley is this super strong guy. We know he's amazingly strong because he was able to scale the cliffs of sanity. We know he's an excellent swordsman because he beat Amigo. We also know that he's strong because he beat Fezzik. And we know that he's very smart because he beat Wazim. So Wesley is a very talented, strong young man who is guided in everything he does by his love for Buttercup. Next on to Count Rogan. Count Rogan is the six-fingered man and he is just evil and malicious, and all he cares about is inflicting pain on people and seeing how they react to it. That's his one desire in life. Vizzini is a very pompous Sicilian, and he's very proud of being a Sicilian. He thinks he's all that. He thinks he's so smart. He thinks that he can even beat Wesley in a match of the brains, which ultimately leads to his downfall. He also calls Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato morons <laughs> compared to him. Anigo is an excellent swordsman, that's how we first meet him, but even more than that, he's this passionate man searching for vengeance against his father. That really defines him, he's a Spaniard as well. Uh, Fezzik, he's just this big, strong giant who comes across as a bit more slow and dim-witted, but he's incredibly loyal, an incredibly loving character. And I would say that throughout the film, they are all very believable, they all stick to who they are and stick to their characters, and they all work very well within the movie. So, what is the diction, or for our public school friends, the way in which the characters speak? Is it accurate considering the setting? Uh, well, okay, so I'll just go through quickly each of the characters. Buttercup, she talks kind of airy uh, a lot of the times, but she can talk very passionately, too. Passionate in her anger and her love for Wesley. Wesley, when he talks with uh, Buttercup, he has this passion and love with her. But when he talks for other people, he has this cool calculation and just this determination always that determination to get to Buttercup. Humperdinck, he's very deceptive in his speech. He talks very nicely, very slyly, but he's really just spreading lies. Rogan, he just sounds evil when he talks, to be honest. He always sounds malicious and cruel. Bazzini, every word that comes out of his mouth is a pompous, high-pitched tone. Uh, Anigo, he has an accent um, because he's a Spaniard, and he's also on fire. Every word that he says is on fire for that vengeance. Fezzik talks a little slower to mimic um, this, that slower brain that he would have as the character. And I would say that these are very accurate to all of their characters. Now considering the setting, it's not necessarily always true because this looks like it takes place in Italy and they don't have any sort of accent or that sort of thing. They all pretty much all sound like Americans. But considering the tone of the movie, which is supposed to be making a parody of those medieval things and action and adventure and romantic comedies, I would say that yes, the way in which the characters speak is very accurate to the tone of the movie. What is the thought or the insights and observations made by the characters throughout the different parts of the movie? Well, we have the thought of true love conquers all as we see Wesley con continuing to conquer everything. All the, he says that he can conquer everything all for the sake of Buttercup. He tells the story of how he was spared by the Jedi pirate Roberts because of his love for Buttercup. Um, we also see that they always talk about people without love are evil. They're always talking about how Humperdinck is evil and how Rogan is evil. And to the flip side of both of these, we see that they don't have any sort of love, especially Humperdinck. Um, Rogan at least has a love for pain, but Humperdinck has a love for nothing but um, tracking. I mean, mm -hmm. We see that they don't love people and so they're evil. And then finally, one thing that is considerably repeated by Wesley is that you ought to be faithful to that true love. You need to be faithful. 
he condemns Buttercup for not being faithful to her true love. That is very important to him. He claims that he has always been faithful to her. And so I think that's one of the main points that the characters make throughout the movie. So what is the spectacle or visual elements of the film, and how do those specifically impact what, what the film is trying to say? Well, we have the countryside, the castle, all these different things that they help tell the story very well. Um, we have the water infested with eels. It all helps to add to the setting and everything that we're trying, that the movie is trying to make. Um, as far as true love goes, it's very scenic things. One thing I'd like to point out uh, specific is the Cliffs of Insanity, which is where they use part of the setting as a very major part of the plot, which is very interesting and very neat. Indeed. And um, what kind of music is in the film? How does that help to add to the setting that it's trying to create? Well, the music is kind of this uh, silly, cheesy, 80s romantic music, which doesn't really fit in your usual action and adventure movie, but it's kind of supposed to give that sort of parody of these sort of things, this sort of comedic, silly film that is not supposed to be taken so seriously, but it's much more light, and it still adds to the whole flavor of fighting for true love. Well, folks, there's all the evidence laid out for you. Now, Sophie, could you wrap this bad boy up nicely for us and, and make one final argument about the film's theme and, and the redemption? Okay, so like I said, the theme is true love commerce. And I think we've seen this multiple, multiple times. The whole time we see that Wesley, one of the main characters, and Inigo, one of the main characters, they're both fighting for love. We see Buttercup's change from being unfaithful to true love and being faithful to true love. We've seen that the characters that are evil and bad, the antagonists, all are without love. The Zini, Humperdinck, Rogan, everyone that's evil doesn't have this love. They don't have this true love, and everyone that's good is fighting for this true love, and then we have the change of Buttercup. So I think that the theme is definitely true love conquers all, at least as we've seen throughout, evaluating each of these things independently. And when we view the movie, every Every scene of the movie seems to be fighting uh, for this theme. And then the redemption is Buttercup's redemption from being unfaithful to true love to being faithful to true love and ultimately being saved by Wesley. As we've seen, that was her fatal flaw, was that she was being unfaithful. And we saw that develop as she discovered what she needed to be. She needed to be faithful. And once she was faithful, then she could be redeemed by Wesley and saved. And so ultimately, I think that that is the theme and redemption for this movie, for sure. Well, I think we at uh, the studio here have all been convinced. Thanks again to Sophie Burkhart, and I'll see you guys next time on Mr. Groovy's Movies.